What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to the Total Takedown. This is the home of fight. I'm your boy Clint, and I am in parts unknown coming to you, but that doesn't mean we're not going to get the show in. We're talking overs and unders, but I got to keep this short because the Wi Fi is terrible. So let's get straight on into it. Hit the like button for me, subscribe if you haven't already, and join the Discord. Mitch Raposo takes on Andre Lima. Two and a half is your total, over two and a half, minus 150, under two and a half, plus 120. You guys know I like my violence. I think Lima is fully capable of violence, but Mitch is a tough son of a gun the only thing here is that he is coming in on short notice so i don't know if we're getting 100 percent mitch raposo and if we were i'd be more confident in him going a full 15 minutes or pulling off maybe a late finish himself with him coming in on short notice i'm not sure if that's gonna be the case if he goes for broke early we could see an under if he doesn't have the gas tank we could see an under so i think there is some potential value on the under two and a half but i kind of feel like this one probably goes the full 15 so we will say over even though minus 150 i don't really like alien Perez and jocelyn Edwards over two and a half is minus 280. This is a dead nuts women's MMA over. I am sprinkling Jocelyn Edwards in round three because we've seen Aileen Perez absolutely gas herself silly. But if she doesn't gas out completely, she should be able to control Edwards. Edwards is tough. Edwards is durable. And I think that she'll be able to hang around in this fight as well. I'm not looking to buck the trend and go under here. Mickey Gall takes on Basil Hafez. We've got a one and a half total over one and a half minus 190. You can probably find an even money two and a half or maybe a slightly juiced under two and a half. This is one where I would look over Basil Hafez. He's still relatively unproven at the UFC level. And the one thing Mickey Gall is, is, is tough. Like he's a guy that will get in there and scrap. Maybe he's not finishing Basil Basil, but he will play off of his back, and I don't know that Basil's going to TKO him in the first, so I would look at the over one and a half, but I'm not touching that price tag. Phil Rowe takes on Jake Matthews, two and a half, over is minus 145, under two and a half, plus 115. I like violence in this fight, guys, I really do. Jake Matthews, we've seen him to be chinny, he's got the type of power you need to finish. Phil Rowe, he's also a guy that can be hurt, both these guys have submission upside, we've seen Jake Matthews tap more than once, give me violence baby, under two and a half. Grant Dawson takes on Joe Selecki, grapplers delight here, over two and a half, minus 200, and again, exactly like the fight we mentioned earlier, over two and a half is definitely the play from a totals perspective, I'm betting Grant Dawson round two, round three. Uh, I do believe Grant Dawson's pressure cooker offense with Joe Selecki, Selecki's willingness to take bottom position and play off his back, those are going to be the keys to this thing being a finish whether it's a tko with constant pressure and top position from grant dawson or if he finds his way to the back of joe selecki i do think he's going to finish but i think the finishing upside is primarily on the dawson side now i know he's got that chin concern we saw him get tagged by bobby green i just don't think joe selecki's got that kind of power so i think it's sub or bust for joe selecki and i don't see him actually being a better grappler enough to tap out a guy like Grant Dawson, unless he hurts him first. You never know. It's MMA. This is a fist fight. Next up, Jailton Almeida takes on Alexander Romanov. We've got a pick em at one and a half rounds. And this is maybe the most intriguing fight from a totals perspective on the entire board here to me because what is this fight going to look like? I have no idea. Romanov could chuck Jailton Almeida around for five straight minutes and then completely gas out and be helpless in round two. We could get a terrible striking match when a couple grapplers try to see who's better on the feet because both of them are really good grappling. Almeida may look like the guy everyone thought he was just a fight or two ago and maul Romanov. I have no clue. I'm going to lean towards the over one and a half. I kind of think Jailton still being the undersized guy, Romanov will have the cardio, the hips, the grappling to be able to stuff some of this early, but I don't think he'll be able to keep it up. So I'll say over one and a half, but after that, who the hell knows? Cesar Almeida takes on Romanov, uh, sorry, Roman Hopilov. Two and a half is your total. Over two and a half plus 105, under two and a half minus 135. And I do also like violence here in this spot. I think we're going to get a high level kickboxing match. And we have seen Hopilov hurt, damaged, and, and really taken advantage of with leg kicks. We've seen him finish. We've seen him submitted. It's a guy that I think can be had. And I do think that's kind of the point here. Cesar Almeida is a much better kickboxer than he is. However, Almeida is older and less experienced on the ground. So there's the chance that maybe Roman pulls out that full well-rounded MMA game, switches it up puts Almeida on the ground, finds his way to a TKO finish or something like that. I think there's plenty of opportunities here for violence on both sides. Randy Brown takes on Elizu Zuleski Dos Santos, two and a half again. Over two and a half is minus 145 and under two and a half is plus 115. Both of these guys are total monsters. I hate them. I hate them so much from a totals perspective because Randy Brown and Elizu Zuleski are both more than capable of finishing anybody with a single strike. We talked about this in, Land in Randy Brown's last fight that he could easily pick and poke and stick and move his way to 15 minutes. In fact, most of the time, that's what he does. But if the perfect opportunity arises, he is so clean 
clean, he is so crisp, and he hits so damn hard that he can finish anybody with one single shot, and that's what he did in his last fight. I said over, it went round one. It was under big time. That's what's going to happen here. It depends on how they play this thing. I'm going to say over, but both guys are more than capable of making this an under fight. Absolutely not a total I'm going to be playing because I feel like I'm flipping coins. Nico Price takes on Alex Morono, two and a half the total, over two and a half plus 110, under two and a half minus 140, and I am going to lean under. We've talked about this a hundred million times, guys. No two fights are ever alike. Yes, this is a rematch. Yes, this has happened before. Morono almost finished Price. Price did finish Morono. That's what happened the first time. So maybe we get a more tentative game plan here. Maybe we get more grappling. Maybe we get a, a decision where one guy thinks he's more technical than the other. But come on, it's a Nico Price fight. At the end of the day, this is a Nico Price fight. He's going to wade into the fire and he's either going to kill or be killed and that's the only way this guy knows how to play it so if morono can stick and move and keep nico price at range for 15 minutes then good on him this thing might go over then i think this is going under and minus 140 is probably a really good price tag for that uh kevin holland takes on michael olix a chuck who is no longer lord by the way he changed his nickname something about a calvaryman or something uh one and a half the total over one and a half minus 145 under one and a half plus 115. And I would be looking more under than over in this spot, guys. So Mikhail Oleksaychuk really only has one direction, and that's forward. This guy comes out of uh, his corner like a bull in a china shop, and he really tries to just run you over in that first round. If he can't do that, most of the time he can't. He can't keep it up for more than six, seven minutes than he's had by his opponent. Kevin Holland is going to look to counter. When this guy comes in, Holland's got a big reach advantage. He's going to have that right hand straight down the pipe. He's got the jiu-jitsu edge, and we know Oleg Zaychuk struggles on the ground. So Oleg Zaychuk is going to win this thing in round one and finish Holland, something very difficult to do, or he's not going to do it at all, and he doesn't bring a pack pack with him. This guy is going to get put down if he can't finish Holland early, and I think this thing finishes in the first round. So I'm going to say under one and a half. Sean Strickland takes on Paulo Costa. We have a four and a half total. Interestingly enough, I don't know that all the books are fully aware this is a five round co-man event. Like if you look on FanDuel, it's a moderately priced two and a half that they have. Just shop around. That's all I'm saying. Um, four and a half under is minus 125. So you can get plus money or, you know, minus 105, something like that on the over four and a half. And I actually kind of feel like we're gonna see a full 25 minute fight here, guys. There's a chance for violence, obviously. Sean Strickland has been knocked out before, but Paulo Costa, I don't know if you can finish this guy. Like, I know Izzy did it, but there was the whole wine thing, and that was really weird. Like, I don't think that Sean Strickland is the guy that's going to finish Paulo Costa. I do think we're going to get a 25-minute banger type of fight here, but there's just hairs on the back of my neck. Like, I want to say Paulo Costa by decision is like the sneaky pick for the week where it's a crazy upset, and it goes a full 25 and just not the way people are expecting it. But then there's also situations where Sean Strickland can get and we are in the post-USADA era, so maybe Paulo Costa is back. Maybe he's going to have all of his power at his uh, at his disposal here for this one. There's a chance this thing goes under. And then, of course, Sean Strickland can melt anybody with the cardio. It depends on what his game plan is coming in. So be careful on this one. I will tentatively say over, but I, I'm not confident at all. I like the decision sprinkle at like 9, 10 to 1, but I don't like the over 4.5 at like even money, if that makes sense. Main event time, Islam Mahachev takes on Dustin Poirier, two and a half year total under two and a half is minus 180 you can get plus 140 on the over two and a half and I don't think you need it uh, Dustin Poirier is a guy who really comes and tries to break people with his cardio with his pace he has to survive the early onslaught like he did with Benoit Saint-Denis and then drag people into a war the problem is Islam is more than capable of being in that war I don't think he can thrive in that war so it's going to be over quickly if they just start chucking bombs and if they're not chucking bombs I think Islam is going to be able to do what Benoit Saint-Denis did and then not just kill over and die and cardio death gas after six seven minutes the way that happened and i think islam will keep this on the ground and find a way to dustin poirier's neck at some point i do think this fight ends in the first two rounds quite frankly so i'm gonna say under two and a half minus 180 is a little bit stiff but this should be a relatively violent fight especially with dustin poirier throwing the r word around there last opportunity to make this happen i don't see him playing it tentatively he's probably going to go for broke and just leave it all out there the way he has his entire career that's the total takedown, everybody. We'll see you tomorrow for the undefeated post weigh in show, and we will find a way to get you the sharp action report for UFC 302. Still trying to figure out the details because I'm going to be traveling, but we will make sure you guys get what you need. Do me a favor, hit the like on your way out. We'll talk to you tomorrow.